In today's video, I'm going to show you how to design a LEGO minifigure builder using Figma. You can customize your LEGO minifigure however you like, using component properties and variants. All the assets and the prototype are available in the Figma community, and you can access the link in the description below to use them as a resource. So let's get started. Here you can see that I have collected all the assets we need, like different heads, bodies, legs, hair and hats these are the icons we will need and here are the lego hands we are going to use okay the first thing we need to do is create a default character so let's bring in all the assets we need from the asset tab we need a pair of hands a body hair a head and legs let's put them together but before that we need to make sure the layer order is correct Okay, here we go. Now we need to select everything and set it as a component. But since the create component button isn't available here, because we are selecting instant of multiple components, we have to right click and find create component from the menu. Let's call it character. Now we need to define the properties for it. Select it go to add property and click the plus button choose instant swap name it hair and hat and set its value to hair one from the hair and hat section then click the plus button in the preferred value section and select all instances here this way all the hair and hat assets will be available in this property. Next, we need to apply this property to the hair layer. So select the hair layer, click this button and choose the hair and hat property. Now, if I create an instant from this component, I can swap the hair with different hairstyles and hats. Okay, we need to do the same for all the other assets. This time, naming it head. And choosing head1 as the default value from the head section. Then, hit the plus button and add all other heads as preferred values. Don't forget to apply it. Select the head1 layer and assign the head property to it. Now you can easily change the heads. Repeat this process for the body and legs. Now that it's ready, we need to bring in a mobile frame. Let's use an iPhone 16 frame, for example. The character should be inside the frame, but we need to make it larger. To do that, press K on your keyboard to use the scale tool. Your cursor will change, and then you can drag it to make the character bigger. Let's scale it up to 160 widths. Then align it to the center. 
Now that we have our default character, we need to create the different items. Body, hair, head, legs, and hat. Place them in the correct order and set them to auto layout. Set the gap to 30 and position them below the character. Let's add a grid to keep things aligned. Change it to column, set the count to 4, and adjust the margin and gather to 16. Since only one state is active at a time, we'll highlight the active one in blue and keep the others light gray. Now we should bring in all the head options. But before that, we need to define a property that shows which head is selected. Here we can see all the assets are 90 to 90 pixels, so we'll create a rectangle with the same dimensions. Remove the fill color and turn it into a component. Let's call it item holder. Next, create an instance of it, set it as a new component, and add a variant. Name the component select slash hair. Give the variant a blue fill with 10% opacity. Add a blue stroke, and set the corner radius to 8. The first variant should remain the default, while the second one should be the selected state. You can rename property one to state as well. Then select the whole component and add an instance swap property. Call it hair and set hair one as the default value. Then select all the hair options from the hair and hat section. Make sure you only select hair, not hats. Apply the property to both variants by double-clicking each one. Duplicate this component for the next asset, which is the head. Rename it to select slash head. Click on edit property, change the name to head, set the value to head1. Remove the previous preferred values and add all the heads. Continue this process for the remaining items. Make sure to add a non-state for the hat option, since by default our character isn't wearing a hat. Now that we have everything set up, let's test it out. We'll get an instant of the select slash head component, 
turn on the grid and duplicate it three more times. Set the second one to head 2, the third one to head 3, and the fourth to head 4. Select all of them and apply Auto Layout. Align them to the center, duplicate the row, and update the other heads. Now select all three auto layout groups and nest them into a new auto layout. Select the items, apply auto layout again, and set a 24 pixel gap. Then align everything with the character using a 48 pixel gap. Finally, position it outside the iPhone 16 frame. Since this is the head selection section, and the default head is this one, it should be selected by default. So click on it and set its state property to selected. Now select the whole frame and create a component. Let's call it main. Next, we'll add a variant. Let's say we want to select a different head. If we tap on this head in the prototype, the character's head should update, and the selected head should change as well. So select the head, go to the prototype tab, and connect it to the next variant. You'll see the trigger is set to untap, because my prototype settings are already configured for iPhone 16. It's set to untap with change to as the action and instant as the animation. Now select the head in the second variant and change its state to selected. Then set head one back to its default state. Finally, update the character's head property from head one to head seven. Now let's add another variant for the hair option. We'll update the color to blue and set the head color to light gray. Then we'll swap the head items for hair assets. Get an instant of select slash hair, cut it, and paste it into the first auto layout row. Position it using the arrow keys. Remove the heads and duplicate it three more times. Update the hair options, duplicate the row, remove the remaining heads, and update the other hairstyles. Set the default hairstyle to selected. Next, add a new variant. Select the second hairstyle and connect it to the new variant in the prototype tab. Update the selected hairstyle and also update the character's hair in the new variant. Now let's test it. Let's select this head. Okay, it works. Now let's go to the hair tab. Oh, the hair tab isn't working. Let's check. Looks like we forgot to connect it to the next frame. Let's fix that and test it again. Press R on the keyboard to restart. Now we can select different hairstyles. We'll need to set up the body, legs, and hat options in the same way.
Don't forget to set the first hat option to none since our character doesn't wear a hat by default. Oh, I forgot to update it with a hat. Perfect. Now let's make it look even better. We'll add a background. some buttons and check it out yeah that's it we are successfully built a fully customizable lego minifigure builder in figma using component variant and instant swap properties if you did don't forget to like subscribe and leave a comment below Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.